Welcome! In this tutorial series, we'll take a guided tour of Edison, FL Studio's advanced wave editor and recorder plugin. Use the index in the video information below if you're looking for something specific. In this series, we show you how to import and edit audio samples, export them as files or to FL Studio, how to record audio, analyze the pitch in a sample, how to reduce unwanted noise in a recording, use the integrated equalizer and reverb, how the built-in envelopes work and how this workflow extends to other parts of FL Studio. This video is the first one to watch and explains audio editing with Edison. There are a number of ways to import a file into Edison. You can right-click a sample in the browser and choose Edit in Audio Editor. By default, this will open the sample in an Edison on the master track. Edison also supports drag and drop import from the browser in your operating system or in FL Studio. Once you've got your file in Edison, you can edit it. Click and drag anywhere in the wave to make a selection. Your selection and everything else you'll be doing in Edison will snap to the current snap setting. In the snap menu, you can choose to snap to the grid, regions, samples, zero crossings or detected pitches. When the snapping is set to zero crossing, sometimes there are two snapping options for one zero crossing. When the waveform crosses through zero between two samples, you will be changing the setting a lot, so it's best to keep this in mind. Go to the edit menu and choose delete to delete the section of audio you have selected. To undo something you've done in Edison, press the undo button. Right click it to see the undo history where you can jump to previous points by selecting an entry in the list. Choose clear in the edit menu to replace your selection with silence. You'll notice these options have keyboard shortcuts listed in the menu. These will work when Edison has keyboard focus when its window is selected. You can turn this off and on in the plugin title bar. So for delete, press the delete key and for clear, press shift and delete. When deleting parts of a sample, particularly the end, notice the click free editing option here. When this is on, it creates a short fade out to stop clicks. This may not be what you want. Audio is always selected in a continuous selection. Click to the left or right of it to extend it or click towards the center of it to shrink it. To deselect, go to the select menu and choose deselect or press the up arrow key on your keyboard. To duplicate your selected audio, go to the edit menu and select copy, then paste insert. As you'd expect, these are bound to control C and control V. There are a number of other paste options available. Paste Mix will add the copied audio to the existing audio in the selection. Paste Replace will replace the audio in the selection with what has been copied. The other paste options require a bit more know-how to use, so we'll talk about them in other videos. You can add silence anywhere in the wave to make the audio line up with events better via the insert silence function in the edit menu. This will add silence as long as the selection you've made from the left edge of your selection. If you want to add silence at the end, you'll have to increase the length of the file by duplicating a bit of audio at the very end of the file, then inserting your silence and then deleting the audio you duplicated earlier. If your audio file is too quiet, you may want to make it louder by normalizing it. Normalizing multiplies all values in the audio file so the highest peak reaches the maximum value, in this case, zero decibels. Click the normalize button in the top middle of the plugin or press Ctrl and N. This works with selections too. <laughs> 
needs. Let's look at how this can be even more powerful. Audio files often have loud and quiet parts. So technically, you could select individual parts and press normalize until the end of time. If you have markers in your file though, this process can be a one-click operation. So, let's talk about markers. These create regions in your sample that can be individually processed. Go to the Regions menu and select Add Marker or press the M key on your keyboard without opening the menu. You will be prompted to enter a name for the new marker. Hit Enter and Edison will create a new marker at the left edge of your selection. To reposition, these can be clicked and dragged. To zoom in for fine adjustments, hold right shift when clicking on a marker. Right click and select delete to remove them. Now here's the trick. While you could technically manually split your audio into pieces this way, this would take forever. And that's why Edison has auto slicing. Auto slicing is particularly useful for percussion loops. Go to the regions menu and select one of the auto slicing options. The three at the top use audio peaks to determine marker position. The three at the bottom use Edison's internal time grid. You can change the grid by choosing to work in tempo synced versus free mode here. In free mode, the grid shows seconds and quarters of seconds. In synced mode, it will use the project BPM or if the wave file has tempo information metadata, it will use that. While we are discussing times and grids, the sample selection start and end times are shown here on the upper right of the display. You can right click it to show in samples or seconds. Okay, back to slicing. I'll go for dull auto slicing here as it's the least responsive of the detection methods. As you can see, Edison has placed markers throughout the sample. Now we're set up to perform a much smarter normalization. Go to the tools menu and select normalize all regions. All regions instantly normalized. Cool. You can set a loop in the regions menu too. A loop uses two special markers that can change how the file is played in FL Studio. Let's make a selection and set the loop. Then deselect. If I turn on loop playback in Edison now, the file will play to the second marker and then loop infinitely from the first marker to the second marker until I press stop. There is also a loop tuning tool to help you loop difficult audio smoothly. Make a selection, then go to the tools menu and open the tune loop tool. This uses smearing echoes, crossfades, blurring and loop length fine tuning to smooth out the loop. So it's easier to create a playable sustained sound in a sampler. Set the crossfade length here, this changes the loop size, tension changes the crossfade handle tension, and snap will detect pitch and snap the smearing echoes to multiples of the detected fundamental frequency. Blurring is a feature we'll explain later in the convolution reverb segment. When you're ready, you'll want to export your file from Edison so you can use it. Go to the file menu to save your selection as a new wave file. Alternatively, you can send the sample to the playlist directly here. Right click the button to send the sample to the selected channel instead. If you have markers or a loop in your file, they will show up in FL Studio's waveform displays. Click on the drag selection button to drag and drop your selection to a channel, plugin window, the playlist, and FL Studios or your OS's file browser. Cool! Now you know the most commonly used tools and features in Edison and how to get started using them. But that's not all. Three other plugins in FL Studio use Edison's features to edit audio. 
DirectWave and SliceX have Edison's wave editing built in, so you can make the same changes there without having to load an extra Edison plugin. Fruity Convolver also supports an Edison-like workflow for editing its impulse response files in place. And with that, you're now well equipped to start using Edison and its tools to make audio editing easy for yourself. As always, remember to check the video information for segments, any relevant manual or video links, and the music used in this video.